All right, so a number of you have asked how we're going to grind the bottom of this part, but before we get into that, I'd like to talk about what we've accomplished so far. You may recall that we had to go to the jig grinder. We had to grind this hole and this hole within two-tenths of size, square and parallel, and the bottom hole, and we had to hold the center distance from this hole to this one within a couple of tenths. Once the shaft goes in there, we need to lock it in place. And this is the mechanism that we're going to be using to lock it in place. So this merely slips inside this hole like so. I will take the shaft and put it inside there. So this should slip in like that. And we got to get it lined up just right. Oh, by Yemeni, it ought to go in. Well, it's being a little stubborn, isn't it? There we go. All right, so we got that one locked in. The other one I left in there already, so you know how that works. And then the next step is to slide this one in. Need a little turkey. There we go. Now the truth is right here. We know these two line up, but will this guy slip in? Look at that. Like it was made for each other. We're going to turn this one around to put the knobs on the same side. Because that's the way it'll be used. It'll be used exactly like this. So we'll take this center out. We'll turn him around. And again, slide him in. Look at that. Just like it belongs. So the objective now that we have these jig ground holes and looking pretty good, our objective will be to grind the bottom. How are we going to grind the bottom? Well, there's two ways to do it. One way would be to put it in a V-block like this, here and here, and indicate it so we get it pretty square, and then grind it that way. The other way is to put it on a couple of parallels, put it on this way, and then we will block it in here and here, and that'll support it, and that's what we're going to do to take it back there and grind it. So, uh, Tyler, what do you say we go out and back and we give this baby a good try? So the first thing we want to do is wipe the chuck down. Make sure we have no grease on there because when we use the stone, the stone will load up with grease and it's not going to do its job. And just a gentle touch, you can feel it. if there's any burrs on there. I like to use this knife stone because it will actually allow your fingers to feel any burrs that are on there. And believe me, the burrs are very, very important that you remove them. And I'm feeling okay about that. This is the part we're going to grind, and I'm going to get a couple of other parts that we're going to be putting up here. I like to stone these as well. And again, wipe and slide, wipe and slide. So that's the way we're going to do it. And the parts that we're going to be grinding are here. I'm going to set those up like so. We need to block it in. We're going to turn this 90 degrees like this. And we're going to get a couple of uh, magnetic angle plates here and we're going to block this in. I'll show you what I mean by that. I've already stoned this off. Put one right here. And we're going to put another one right here. And remember, this is really for support. So it's not critical that everything is exactly uh, stoned off. In this case, it doesn't matter that much because of the way we're doing this, but it's just a good habit to get into. That feels pretty good. It feels like it's blocked in nicely. And I'm going to turn the chuck on. And that should be pretty good. Now all we want to do is come in here and touch this and not take off any more than necessary. However, there is quite a bit of stock here that we're going to have to remove. I can see that one of them has already been ground and uh, we don't know how accurate that is. So we're going to clean that up as well. All right, so we've got, it, got our set up there. We're just going to take a little clean up here and see how it looks. Right now, it looks pretty good. 
remember we did this on the jig grinder so we know that our holes are exactly square and parallel with one another we'll grind the bottom here and uh, when we're done that'll be the end of this demonstration as far as showing how we made this work on a jig grinder now this one here we're going to re be removing quite a little bit more stock which we knew that from the beginning so I'm going to take it real easy here because we don't want to generate a lot of heat because we're doing this dry. And the reason we're doing it dry is because we wanted you to be able to see the sparks and see what we're doing rather than grinding it wet. And also wet, grinding it wet makes a, quite a bit of a mess. So we'll finish this up here, we'll let it cool, and we'll take a finish cut because it's going to be a little warm on this one part. I could stop and do one leg like this and then go back and do the other one. That's another way of doing it, which is not a bad way to do it either. You save all that time going back and forth and, and breaking your, your arms. So we'll do it this way to show you both ways to do it. I prefer doing it like this. You can see the wheel is doing its job. It's breaking down like it's supposed to. See the cutting edge is breaking down, which is beautiful. And I like to take one cut, just remove all the stock you need to. No point in taking 10 cuts at a thousand seats. We're probably removing around 10 thousandths, I would guess. Which is fine, could be 20, it doesn't make any difference, believe me. A lot of folks don't agree with that, but I'm telling you, that's this is the better way to do it. And when we're done here with this one, we'll go back and take a couple of finished cuts and we'll be good to go. This particular reed grinder, I like. It has ball ways on it, which means it's very easy to move back and forth right to left. Or on the x-axis as it's called. I always like surface grinding. Still do. In fact, I like any kind of grinding. I don't care if it's surface, OD, ID, jig grinding. But I'm very comfortable with surface grinding and uh, ID and OD. We'll let this cool for just a minute. We're just about through here. There we go. So I will let that cool and we'll come back in a moment and take a finished cut. So we're gonna take a few tenths off. Let's see how that looks. This is about 25 millions is all I fed down. It's not even a not even a half a thousandths. I like to go nice and slow on the finish cut. Make sure I get a good finish. And it will take one pass going back the other way. And we should be able to call it done. And you'll notice I'm feeding in about three turns. Whereas when I was taking the first cut, which was pretty rough, because there was a lot of stock on it, I fed in much slower. <coughs> so we'll come back one more time. I like that. Nice and even. Same amount coming off of both sides. Yeah, that looks great. That's it. We're good to go. <coughs> That's it, folks. We are done. Take a good look at that. And... All right. So we just came back from the shop and we did our surface grinding and I'm really happy with the way it came out. As you can see, the finish is beautiful and I'd like to show you that you can feel within a couple of tenths, believe it or not, when you've got sharp edges like that. And that that's right there. I can I can I just can't even feel anything there. So it's a beautiful part. It came out great. I'm happy with it. And again, this is to be used, this bench center will be used horizontally or vertically. And this surface therefore has to be ground square and parallel with the center line of the shaft. But we're not going to do that. For the purpose of the showing the jig grinding and getting it square and parallel. We've completed that, and I'm happy with the way it came out. Tell your friends about us, Facebook, Twitter, 
uh, Instagram. I think I got it that time. Please, uh, if you like what you see, subscribe, and thanks for watching.